morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Fulmer. I'm a fire captain with the French Camp Fire District up in Northern California. Uh, going on 20 years in the fire service. Um, I'm the, uh, like I said, a fire captain, assistant training coordinator for our department, California State Fire Marshal instructor, and I also do some instructing for uh, Firetown uh, training specialist. So what I'm going to talk about today is leaving this job better than you found it. A lot of things I'm going to talk about, Andrew kind of touched on in his, uh, his speech, you know, the passion that you have. This picture on the bottom was taken about a year ago. Um, it's myself and my crew. We're uh, on the drill ground. We're running our 300-foot pre-connect off the tail of the rig. Thanks to social media, which can be a great thing, um, social media with the KZ Fools, uh, Fit to Fight Fire, this picture's made it around um, Facebook quite a bit. Um, it had some good response. It had some bad response. But the main thing is we were getting out there. We were training. We are trying to better ourselves. Got some pictures up here on the board. Some of these people you may recognize, some you may not. Even though this presentation isn't about entitled mentors, mentors are a huge part when it comes to us and the fire service and leaving the fire service better than we found it. Up in the top left corner, you have Lieutenant Andrew, Fre Andrew Fredericks, who was taken from us on 9-11. Um, next to him, a good friend of mine, Chief Lasky, uh, pride and ownership traveling around the country preaching to firefighters about pride and taking ownership in yourself, your department, and your communities. Next to him, Aaron Fields out of the Northwest, out of Seattle, traveling around, doing his nozzle forward, getting the information out there, leaving the job better than he found it. Next to him is Gary Lane out of Kent, Ohio. Um, he put together the book of Andy. He compiled all the articles from Andy Fredericks, put it into a PDF file that anybody can download and read. Anytime I get a new firefighter, I print it off, go to Kinko's, put it in a binder, and I hand it to him. Gary's not afraid to take a grinder or a welder to a brand new pro bar to make it work better for him, leaving the job better than he found it. Down next to me in the white hat, uh, one of my old battalion chiefs, Kind of gave me the kick I needed to really dive into training, find a passion. Uh, he, gave me the ch he gave me a chance. He believed in me. He gave me a chance. The other white hat, Chief Ed Hatfield, had a huge impact in my career. And teaching with him through Firetown, seeing his passion and what he's doing to leave the fire service better than he found it. Me with my assistant chief up there in the black helmet, 30 plus years still loves the job as much as he did when he came on it 30 years ago. And he's always sending me text messages throughout the week. And he always ends it with, remember, this is the greatest job in the world. And everything that he's done for me has made me a better firefighter, has made me a better company officer. So <clears throat> I'm sure this slide will get some pushback with the two objects on the left-hand side, the Xbox and the recliner. Uh, there's a quote at the bottom by J.J. Watt from the Houston Texans that says, stop making excuses and start making things happen. I think that's, uh, that's starting to become a culture in the fire service. These guys are wanting to make excuses for everything instead of just getting out there, doing it, and make it happen. So we've all got things to do throughout the day when we're on duty. Rig checks, public education events, running calls, training, house chores, whatever it may be. Unfortunately, a lot of times our training takes a back seat because guys just say, oh, we don't have enough time. So at 6 o'clock in the evening after chow, instead of going out and hitting the drill grounds for an hour, instead they hit the recliner or they hit the Xbox. So I don't have a problem with those two items on the left-hand side, but those two items on the left-hand side are not going to leave this job better than we found it. The stuff on the right-hand side is what's going to leave this job better than we found it getting out on the training grounds, physical fitness, taking classes, teaching classes on your days off. My mind is constantly going, and it drives my wife nuts. She goes, you cannot shut the fire service off, can you? And I said, no, I can't. Just the other day, I'm on the phone with Streamlight, because I came up, I thought, with this great idea that they could incorporate into their flashlight. My mind is always going, and it, it, it drives my wife nuts. And my kids, too. They're like, Dad, you, you've been gone for 48 hours. You know, let's not talk about the fire department. That's not how most of us are wired. 
And because of that, we're leaving this job better than we found it. <clears throat> what can we do? Do something every shift to make it better. It could be something just as small as sitting your crew down in front of the TV or the computer and watching a YouTube video. Watching Brian Olson's talk from FireX Talk PDX. Um, watching Chief Lasky. Reading an article out of Firehouse Magazine. It can be something as simple as that or getting out on the drill grounds for two hours and stretching lines and not in California, but anywhere else, flowing water. <laughs> so it, it makes our job a little more difficult, especially up in the Central Valley. We, you know, my crew will get out, we'll pull hose, we'll drop five inch LDH, but it's all dry. So, but we're out there, we're training, we're trying to better ourselves. Ask for feedback. Sit down with your crews. Ask for feedback. Sit down with your battalion chief. Hey, what can I do as an officer? What can I do better? Sit down with your crews at dinner time. That's the best place. I call it family time. We sit down, at the, we sit down for breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. That's family time. I'm like, hey, guys, what can I do better? Give me feedback. Whether it's good, bad, whatever. I want feedback so I can improve and improve this job. Never miss an opportunity. I've, had, I've worked with some crews before that they didn't like to train. So you kind of got to get creative with training. So next time you clear that EMS call at the nursing home, the ambulance is gone, you're walking out to the rig, take, her, take 10 or 15 minutes, take that firefighter around. Look at the building construction. Look at forcible entry options that you might encounter or obstacles you might encounter. Um, look at egress points, entrance points. Um, then grab your engineer, your AO. Look at spotting locations, FDC locations, hydrant locations. And before you know it, you've just given them a 15 minute training and they didn't even realize they were training. So a month from now, God forbid, when bells drop for a working fire at that nursing home, you're a step ahead, and that is leaving this job better than you found it. Tap into your resources. You might have a, a captain or an engineer or a firefighter who does construction on his days off. And he's nails on, I mean, no pun intended, he's nails on construction. Tap into him. If you're gonna do a, a building construction class, say, hey, I want you to teach this class for me, or I want input. Tap into your resources. You might have a guy that's a phenomenal welder. I've got a, a buddy of mine, he's on the slide. Uh, firefighter up in, the, up in the, the, the hills. He's building me my own forcible entry door because he's, he's an awesome welder, awesome fabricator, and a heck of a fireman and can grow a mustache like nobody's business. But I tapped into him because now I'll have, that, I'll have my own forcible entry door that I can go around and pass on my passion of forcible entry to departments in my area, including my own department. Ask for help. Never be too proud to ask for help. If you're one of those guys that think that you can just do everything in the world, struggle through anything without asking for help, I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. Man up and ask for help. Because if you don't, you're gonna to continue to struggle and you're gonna go down the road and it's not gonna be a good road. Ask for help. Ask your crews. Don't be proud. We're a family. We're there to help each other. So there's a quote from Wood, uh, Woodrow Wilson. You're here in order to enable the world to live more amply. With greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement, you are here to enrich the world. So that last sentence really draws to me. You're in here to enrich the world. I think all of us, especially everyone sitting in this room today, we are here to enrich the fire service. We are here to leave this job better than we found it. I'm a, father, I'm a husband and a father of three kids, two boys and a girl. She tests my patience every day. <laughs> like Andrew was talking about with his daughter. When my boys grow up, hopefully they follow in my footsteps. And I want to sit down 20 years from now and I want to hear stories about how their fire service is better than the fire service is today. Just like I do with my dad, who retired out of the fire service. 
I sit down with him and we talk fire. And the fire service now is better than it was when he left it. We need to keep it going. We need to keep, keep the tradition alive and keep this motor running. Not a Houston Texan fan, but probably one of my favorite athletes, J.J. Watt. He has a quote that says, once you set a goal, it's, it's all about how hard you're willing to work, how much you're willing to sacrifice, and how badly you truly want it. Every time this guy goes out on the practice field or the game day field, he's given 110% and he's leaving it all on the field. So why can't we be like J.J. Watt? When we hit the training grounds, we're given 110%. When we hit the fire ground, we're given 110% and we're leaving everything there. You can't expect to go out to the training grounds and give 50% and the next hour when bells drop for that greater alarm fire, you cannot expect to perform at 110% on the fire ground unless you're willing to do it on the training ground. These kind of things are going to leave this job better than you found it. It's contagious, just like pride is contagious. You start polishing your boots before the, the start of every shift, guess what? It's going to catch on. Before you know it, everybody in your company, you're going to sit down together and you're going to have a boot polishing party before shift starts. You come in, your uniform's nice, your gig lines look straight. That's going to be contagious. That guy that used to walk around with his boots unzipped and his pants tucked in and his shirt tail out, he's going to come in one day. He's going to be high and tight. His gig lines are in straight. We're leaving the job better than we found it. So why should we care about leaving this job better than we found it? I don't want to imagine what's going to happen to the fire service if we just roll over and pretty much die. I don't want to imagine what the fire service is going to be like in 20 years when my boys are riding on an engine or a truck. I want to keep the tradition and the passion alive, keep passing that on to generation to generation, keep it growing. Think about those who have sacrificed before us or who made, who made us who we are. Our fellow brothers and sisters who made this ultimate sacrifice on 9-11. Think about those people. Think about your mentors. I heard it said once, I can't remember who said it. We're a product of who gets a hold of us first. And I truly believe that. I got taken in by some really good people and some really good mentors when I came into the fire service. Without them, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today. And that is the honest truth. I owe a lot to those people. So let's gravitate toward this, these new firefighters, this new generation. Those of us who care about this job, gravitate toward them. Take them under your wing. Be their mentor. If you don't have a mentorship program in your department, get one. Swallow up those new firefighters. Show them the right way. Then when it comes their time, they're going to do the same thing. And we're going to keep passing it on, passing it on. We're going to leave this job better than we found it. Right? And we already talked about this. We owe it to the new generation of firefighters. You know, I've heard it said you know, we're in the entitlement generation, I guess. They're entitled to everything. Okay, well, let's give them some entitlement. But let's show them how. Let's make them earn it. Let's show them that it takes blood, sweat, and tears, hard work. Let's give it to them, but let's show them how to get there. Again, how can we accomplish this? Mentor the new generation. Take them under your wing. If you're an officer, wash the rig with them. Show them that you're not above going out there and slopping some soap on a rig and grabbing a chamois and drying it. Now, do I, am, I, am I saying do it all the time? No, because as, as an officer, I know there's a ton of paperwork that I got to deal with throughout the day, phone calls, emails, whatever it is. But don't be one of those people that just hide behind your computer. Get out there. Be willing to work with your guys. That's going to be contagious too. As they become an officer, they're going to be like, you know what? I remember that officer I had, my first officer. He washed the rig with us. He rolled hose with us. He did dishes. My, I can't get a dish. I, they body check me. They push me out of the way. So I, I've found out ways to steal the mop from them. That really makes them mad. Um, but get in there. Be willing to do something. Even you know, senior firefighter, senior man on the shift, be willing because it's going to go a long ways. It shows pride, shows ownership in that department. Stop the backstabbing and the bashing. The worst thing that we can do in the firehouse is go around 
backstabbing and bashing each other. Because that's going to accumulate. It's going to grow. Before you know it, there's a disconnect between shifts. There's disconnect between stations. Stop the backstabbing. Stop the bashing. That in itself will leave this job better than we found it. Learn it, teach it, pass it on. Don't be one of those guys that goes and takes a class and keeps the information to yourself. Come back, sit down with your crew. Be excited. Hey guys, I just, whether it's hazmat, forcible entry, ventilation, uh, you know, EMS class, come back, be excited. Hey guys, check this out. I just learned this. I'm going to teach it to you and then we're going to pass it on. Never forget why you wanted to be a firefighter. I didn't get into the job for the money. I got into the job because I loved it and possibly because I grew up in a firehouse. I think I spent more time at the fire station with my dad than I did at home. But that fire, that fuels my passion for this job. Never forget why you came into this job. Let your passion shine. You know, I'm sitting up here, sitting back there listening to Andrew talk earlier, and you can just hear the passion that he has for this job in his voice. And, you know, I, I was scared to death to come up here this morning. And the one thing I told my wife before I left, I just hope I can convey my message and my passion for the job. That's what I wanted to get out. So let your passion shine. Passion's contagious too. You know, you might have a, you might have a slug that's just there for a paycheck. He's that paycheck firefighter. Before you know it, you see a change in him. It is contagious. One man can make a difference. One, one person can start a revolution. So in closing, I want to leave you with this slide. Again, thanks to Facebook, this thing's made it around a bunch. This picture was taken a couple weeks ago on the drill grounds. We were talking about flowing water, um, you know, doing some, some nozzle forward type stuff, uh, some stuff I learned from Brian Brush. Um, and either my engineer or my firefighter snapped this picture. I was laying in bed that night, and I came up with this, this saying. It says, if we in the fire service would set our egos aside, stop hating on each other, and focus on the important things, like our crews, our department, firefighter health and fitness, and the people that we swore to protect, imagine what this job would be like. With that, I would like to thank FireX Talk, Firefighter Cancer Support Network, for putting this on. Thank you very much.